What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Building the Dream. In today's episode, we're going to go ahead and show you how we get to the point that you're seeing now, which is a straight fascia, straight roof line. It's not hard, but it does take a little bit of know-how, a little bit of the right tools, and just a little bit extra time. But I think in the end, it is well worth the time spent. So make sure you follow along, watch the whole video so you can see it come through to the end. But for now, let's go ahead and we're going to talk grade board while we're waiting for the roof to dry off so we can get up there and start doing this work. So when we've got a building on a foundation wall, our grade board, we still go with a treated 2x8 grade board. And I don't know if I have to do that, but it's just nice knowing that down here at the ground level where you might have some moisture, I don't know. I still like to have this. It's non-corrosive. It's not going to hurt anything. But we take this uh, sealant tape. We're just going to go ahead and put it on the bottom of this grade board. Oh, my grade board here is a little bit damp from uh, morning condensation, but this tape is pretty darn sticky. What's nice about it is it's pretty much compressed in packaging, but over time, you can see this is already starting to... Uh, expand you can see that and what's nice about that is this concrete is by no means perfect it's really good the concrete uh, contractor did a really good job but uh, if you look down here you can see like this gap here this this sealant this foam will just expand and it'll fill in all these cracks over time It's always nice to make sure you angle and nail down. And that'll suck it down nice and tight. I just want to make sure I touched on that topic, how that grade board is sealed down to the wall. It works really well, and let's get on to the next part, which is the main part of this video, uh, getting ready for roof, which first has to start with our overhangs and fascia board. We love our GRKs. They're not cheap, but they're awesome. That's two of those boxes, just so you know, Greg. That'll fit. doing here is getting our end fascia installed you can hear in the background the machinery that's my customer he's off prepping for our sides so we can get over there where we got stuck with our telehandler but we're gonna use these GRK screws here on our end fascia that's so we get a nice tight connection into that end grain and we usually put two screws per connection we just go down the line making sure everything lines up with the top of our purlins and then the rest is uh, pretty easy pretty self-explanatory Here's a good detail on how these purlins interact with our fascia. We always run 22, 10 and a half for a two foot overhang, 10 inch, 10 and a half inches for a one foot overhang, and then our two by sub fascia is gonna create our other inch and a half to give us a full one or two foot overhang. And we always just go ahead and run these wild. We don't cut them straight to a purlin, but then we come back in and we're going to secure that splice with another two by six. And this I think is a nice connection. It's a strong connection. And I think it's stronger. Suck that in, Greg. 
I think it's a stronger connection than putting a splice on a purlin because there's really, you're going into end grain. And this is gonna get a nice connection. You can throw some at the top. Yep. That ain't gonna go nowhere. Nice. You can see we're not straight yet. That's okay, we haven't straightened our walls, especially on our end. But we're getting there. We got our uh, customer. Customer's over here spreading some dirt because the sand, we got stuck right where he was at. It's amazing, just a little layer of dirt has uh, turned that into, uh, he's been driving his 60,000 pound truck over here and uh, we couldn't even do our lift, so I'm pretty excited. We'll be able to get down this wall. We'll get our overhangs and tails on as soon as he's done. Okay, so not that I want to bore you with the same sort of content. We've probably all seen how these purlins uh, at the end bays and their tails and all that stuff is installed. But real quickly, we've got our 2x4 tails, and that's so we can continue the top plane of our roof because we've got all of our purlins sitting on top of our truss. Our tails have to also come off the top of the truss. Now we could have them um, installed and manufactured at the truss factory that way and I've had people comment why don't we do that. First off I feel like that's a great way to break the end of the truss when they're getting rolled off the ground or or off of the truck onto the ground or just during installation just having that board out there could cause issues. I like to put our trusses up straighten them out um, and make sure everything is perfect versus if they're already on there it's really hard to straighten everything prior to fascia. Uh, I like to get my fascia board up, then straighten the building. I know everything is mathematically correct. I've pre-cut and measured everything instead of relying on a truss manufacturer to make perfect trusses. Because as we've seen earlier in this series, nobody makes a perfect truss, and uh, especially on these long ones. So we go ahead, do it all up in the air on the lift anyway. It's easy. And then once the fascia is done, um, we can straighten this end out and get ready for the roof to come on. So when we create our overhang here, this is a two foot overhang, and we do these bevel boards, we call them. They're not even bevel boards. We're gonna call them something else, Greg, for now on. What are we gonna call them? Right, We're gonna call them in-betweener boards. We're very <laughs> official here on the RR Buildings crew, and we call them in-betweeners because they go in betwixt the uh, tails. Yep. So we'll call, them, we'll call them, how about we call them our Twix boards? Twix boards? Yeah, they're in betwixt. Makes me hungry. So we've got this two by four that goes in between our tails. And we do that because you can't run a pearl in through this area, you know, solid like that, because we've got our tails here. We want our tail to get up on the truss and have some strength for wind uplift, all that good stuff. So once we come through here and we've got our two, two foot overhang, we go ahead and cut a block just to continue this screw line, give us something in here and, uh, and then our purlins come across and that's what defines all of this now we always like to um, that's actually not too bad we haven't done anything yet to straighten it but this is the mark where we are supposed to be we always leave the last one long because in learning after lots and lots of fascias put on and buildings built by us these things will sometimes grow you know, maybe a 30 second uh, connection or so. So you always try to cut your lines off. You never want to leave your boards long. Otherwise, sometimes we have to, this last tail is out from where we want it to go. So the roof line sometimes grows just a little bit. Now you guys have seen us lay out the roof and get it level, plumb, square, all that good stuff before we start installing our metal sheets. But uh, I'm gonna show you guys a way to do it without using a tape measure. And it's actually really easy, super efficient, and perfect. So I don't throw around those words too often, even though I think we do good work. I think by using this tool I'm about to show you, you can do close to perfect work. Behold the Stabila LA-180L.
this guy is a pretty awesome tool layout station and what it does is once you set a constant line and you've got your um, your laser receiver set and I'll show you you're gonna get a perfect 90 degree um, two 90 degree lines perpendicular to each other that you can use to square up your building your layout your roof just about anything so this is about fifteen hundred dollar tool and I'm all about getting the right tool for the job a tool that's gonna make the job easier and better so it's not always all about easy sometimes it's just about being better this does both now while we have not done any work to actually straighten these walls yet you can see there's some pretty good ins and outs these 2x12s have made a huge difference. I promise you it would be a lot worse if those were not there. And then on our side walls, you can see way down on the other end, it kind of bumps out. It's pretty good overall, but what we're gonna do is set that layout station right here. This line corresponds with the outside of our truss. And on every one of these purlins and up this line of 2x12 and that line of 2x12, is the same line so i should be able to take the layout station and reference that line right there what we've done here is we've put a little temporary block here up on the fascia and so i've set the laser up to be laser marked right on this point right here and so what we're going to do is we're going to use this laser to point a freaking laser beam all the way down to that end where we're going to lock the laser in a perfect line this way then once that is done the laser will automatically point a 90 degree laser this way so then what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to go up to the peak of our roof structure and we've got a mark on that right up here in fact, we've actually got a mark on every one of these purlins that is the same dimension as this mark. And we'll be able to check and make sure that this is perfectly square and it should straighten out the end as well as the side. Let's see. So here I am. I'm on the other, other end of the, the wall. The stabula is down there. I got the receiver. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna power it on. Now you want to keep it a little bit further away from where you think your line is. I'm going to hit these little crosshairs, hold it down. Boom, it is now activated. I am going to now set this guy right on the edge. And now we wait. Oh, that was quick. Must have had it close. It's, it's finding it. You can see that it's finding it. We just hold it tight until that little crosshair disappears. Okay, now, now what that means is we are locked in. We're going to double check it. I made sure that my crosshairs were as close as possible. That's gonna give me the most accuracy. So now let's start checking our wall. Okay, so we're here on the first tail in, actually second tail in, because that one was off and I knew this one was off too. And so if I take my receiver, you can see that's about where I want it. Well, that's not where it's at. So we're gonna go ahead and we got chains down there. We'll go ahead and move it. Zach's over there. He's going to tighten that chain up. Let's see what happens. Not bad. We're good. So I'll just keep doing the same process on all of these. And this is going to tell me where these tails are at. Hey, look at that. All right, that one's good. That's awesome. I'm gonna leave that plastic on though, the face. We leave that on forever. That way it doesn't scratch the screen. That's bothering the crap out of me. 
Now the one thing that's really nice about this is the laser is not affected by wind. So typically we're gonna run that string line on the bottom uh, fascia board to get it straight. But it's if you can tell, I don't know if you can hear, you can see it in the trees, there's a pretty good breeze out right now, which there's no way we would get a consistently straight line. We might have to eyeball the line and put a couple nails every so often to keep it from blowing, but this is this ain't gonna lie. It's always gonna be the same no matter how windy it is. So you can see we take the receiver, it's got this little crow's foot. You can kind of see that right there. And I can take it and move it right to where I was in the way. Move it right to where it lights up and you can see where that crow's foot is. It's kind of dark. But I need to move it just a little bit. So what we'll do is it needs to come my way just a little bit. So Greg's gonna put a chain up there on the bottom cord of the truss. And Zach is gonna wrap it around the column that needs to move. And we're just gonna snap a binder on it tighten that chain up and the tension will move the wall. So we've already done, you can kind of see the chains over there. We've already come all the way from that end this way and it's looking pretty good. Now, there's always gonna be some ins and outs in between the tails and the way we install our steel is gonna take care of that. So stay with me and when we actually install the roof steel, I'll show that. Um, also, you can go back and look at us on our previous build series, the garage, how to build a garage series, and I do show that also. Last truss, let's see where the tail is. This one's got to come out my way just about an eighth of an inch, not even. Since we don't have to move this tail very much, only an eighth of an inch, we're gonna wedge a two by six underneath the truss. And just by putting pressure on it should give us the movement we need. So now that we have the layout station locked on that end of the building, which has then allowed us to get a perfectly straight fascia, we now can come up here and use the same receiver with the sweet magnet that pulls screws out of my pouch. And I'm gonna take it, I got the little crow's foot. Let's find where that laser is. So it's out here somewhere. We want it to be right here. So go ahead, Zach, give me some, uh, give me a little pull. I need about another half inch. So we're gonna have to rethink this, trying to use the layout station to check square on this roof. Um, as we tweak our post or our peak where we want it to go, it's actually, there's enough movement in everything that by having the layout station fastened to the frame, um, it's causing the layout station to move just enough that when we throw that laser 90 feet that way, it's, it'll move it just a little bit. So um, we're gonna have to somehow mount it independent from the building to check this. I don't know exactly how we're gonna do that. Come on, dude. Oh, yes! That only took three tries. I only recorded two, so. All right, so the layout station was not working for us in this application because every time we tweaked the peak, it was just enough to move the layout station so what we did was we went with the old-fashioned way of using math and finding the correct run rise diagonal measurement to assure that our peak is square with our fascia now what we got to do is straighten out our end but we're going to for the shits and giggles we're going to set the layout station up one more time and check the peak to be square so as long as we're not moving it it'll at least tell us if it's good so the layout station was not the, the answer for setting up our peak to be square with our fascia. Just too much movement on this large building, so we had to 
we had to improvise, kind of go back to the old way, and then we were able to use the layout station to double check our square. So, all good. Um, probably took about an hour almost to get that thing all straight, but honestly, it's a pretty good sized building. Lumber's never as perfect as you hope, so sometimes you just gotta push and pull, and that's what the chains are for. You'd never, never have any luck with, uh, with lumber. That would be just a pain in the butt. Well, we're gonna go ahead and leave this one with some awesome truss fly-through video with my Mavic Pro drone. And uh, man, this is always like my most favorite part of the job. So I had to do this right before we started installing roofing. You can see the telehandler is moving steel into place, but we will get into that on the next video. This one has already reached 20 minutes and there's no sense in diving into another topic. So definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss next video hit that bell so you're notified right away and hey drop me a comment down below did this video help you at all uh would the layout station work for you because i tell you what it's been a game changer for me and i appreciate all the feedback support and we'll see you guys next week or next video whatever comes first i guess